This gentleman has uh, large mediastinal nodes and splenomegaly, so they're, they're suspecting a lymphoma. Uh, so what we'll do though is we'll look and see what the nodes look like. And I like to, if the cytologist is available, to uh, actually, could you play Dr. Gary, please? Um, we'll, we'll do the first FNA for cytology. If it looks just like a lymphoma, then we'll do flow cytometry and we might do a core biopsy as well. Ok, vous allez sentir le tube dans la bouche. Respirez bien. C'est ça. Commencez bien respirer. Voilà. Ok, voilà. Penchez la tête vers l'avant un petit peu. Avalez juste un petit coup. Encore un petit coup. Ok, merci. Essayez de dormir si possible. Restez sur le côté. Sur le côté, comme ça. Ok. Uh, Peux-tu donner une autre verset, s'il te plaît? Okay, so with the mediastinal cases, you want to start, though, and look at the uh, abdomen anyway. Just a quick look at the pancreas there. There's the portal vein, and there's the pancreas, okay, out to the tail. And then we, uh, we, we'll just give him this, okay. And then um, we look at his celiac, and we, we want to find his adrenal. So you find the celiac axis here, and just torque right, and the adrenal is usually right there. There it is, right in here. And that looks uh, pretty much okay. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty much okay. Okay, nothing jumping out at me anyway. Right there. You can see a spleen over here, which does in fact look quite large. So pulling into the chest now, so we go to 30 centimeters. And then you look for the left atrium. And then look at this huge node. And honestly, this node to me doesn't look like a lymphoma. So we're actually doing a randomized trial of uh, 22 versus 25 without the stylet. There have been no studies done uh, comparing both without the stylet. So this to me looks like an epithelial, so we're going to start with this. It looks like an epithelial uh, cancer because there's complete destruction of the echo architecture of the nodes. Uh, with lymphoma, I find that you will see large nodes, but that the, the septations inside the nodes will be pre preserved. It could be a very aggressive lymphoma as well, though, but we'll see. So we put the needle in, no stylet, okay? The data clearly show the stylet is not necessary. I just let the, the stopper down go here. This is a 22 gauge needle. Okay, so we put the needle out. You can see the tip of the needle right there. Once you see where the tip is, you can just go in quickly and then just stop and look for the tip. And once you're in, back and forth, okay? I do a little bit of suction still, even though apparently the data show it's not really necessary. And what I do is I come back and we don't do fanning which is where you stay inside the lesion and try and with the elevator and go somewhere else. Because as you can see, it doesn't really work that well. So what I do is I come out, I stay in between, I stay in between the wall and the lesion, and I go totally somewhere else. I come out, and I go somewhere else. So that's really puncturing in a different part of the node. I can come out, I can move down a bit here, then go in here. So I'm really sampling all through this node. Okay, coming out again, pulling back. And I'll go here now. So we're really sampling all through the node. And this is like the equivalent of doing one pass each time, although I'm not taking the needle actually out of the scope. So I call this the multiple pass technique. And this, sh this clearly, uh, I think, increases the yield of your FNAs because it's like you're sampling several parts of the node before ever taking the needle out of the scope. Okay, so now we're gonna pull this on the slide. Okay, and when there's no stylet, the, the nurse can just sit back and relax while we do all this. So now we're switching needles as part of the trial. So this is 25. Uh, this is 22, sorry. Up to here, okay. So we locate the tip, there's the tip. And you see the, vis the, vi the visibility of the 22 is just as good as the 25. Or I should say the 25 is just as good as the 22, if you ask me. There we go, we're in. The difference is that the 20 25, to me, is easier to manipulate with the elevator and stuff. It, it's not an issue with this case, but if you're in the duodenum and stuff and you need to use the elevator to get the needle to go, to go down, I think it moves much easier with the, 20, with the 25. And our preliminary data show really no difference in the yield between both needles. 
which was sort of expected. But I really find the 25 easier to use. OK, that's it. Uh, what up? Should have done something. So the cytologist says it's uh, abnormal, for sure. It's very necrotic. And he says it's either a large cell lymphoma or a large cell epithelial cancer. So what we're going to do is just a, a cell block, and we'll do flow cytometry as well. So you see, we don't really need a core in these kind of cases. I find it's really, really rare that you need a core, uh, because the core is really, if you're looking for the structure for a lymphoma, but if it's a large cell, from what I understand, you don't really need, need the uh, structure. Um, okay, let's just look at it so before they start treatment. Uh, we, we just uh, published a review on EUS for lymphoma in this new journal called uh, Endoscopic Ultrasound. It's an online journal. So if you want, you can look that up. It kind of reviews all the data on how good EUS is for diagnosing this and for subtyping uh, lymphoma. Okay, so we're gonna take this, voila. Okay. And we could take a quick look at his liver and see if there's any liver mets or anything, but I, it's unusual, I find, with lung cancers to find liver mets on EOS. I don't know why, but, it's, uh, but it is. This sheath is really coming out very far on the scope. Okay, so there's the nodes again. And the problem with this case, too, is that it's very necrotic. So if you don't get live cells, you can't really make a diagnosis. So you really need to try and sample a lot. flow and, uh, and just a cell block. Okay, that's it. Okay, I think we'll pull out here. So mediastinal nodes, uh, if you have a cytologist, um, you know, the advantage is that it gives you a immediate diagnosis. But I think that if you don't have a cytologist, you just, do, you just have to do samples for a cell block and for flow cytometry. The cell block basically replaces the slides because you put them in a cell block, they spin it down, they put it in paraffin, and they basically make slides. So there's, when he's not there, I don't see the point in making slides. Um, when he's there, I make slides so we can look at them obviously right away. And the advantage of obviously having him there is you get a, an immediate answer. And if it shows that it's really not an epithelial cancer, then you know for sure that you have to do the flow cytometry. I don't think it really affects the yield. I think that sampling mediastinal nodes were very good. So even if he's there or not, if you sample all through the nodes, you're going to get adequate tissue. The advantage, as I say, is that you get an immediate answer and it lets you know for sure if you're going to have to do flow cytometry and special studies or not. If not, as I say, you have to do them anyway, so it may just save you some time. So a bottom line is in this gentleman, I think it's really hard to tell. It's either a very large, very aggressive uh, large cell lymphoma, or it's just a very aggressive large cell epithelial cancer, and it's the special stains that are going to tell us.